I want to talk to you about approaching Piffy and picking him up and uh, just generally doing things and relating to him in a way in, in your household and your yard so that he doesn't bite again. And from day one, I can show you that every time that I was going to approach him, that I needed him to, you know, I needed him to go somewhere or maybe I wanted to pick him up. I got a little treat. He loves chicken breast. I've been using just a little bit of chicken breast. And you can get, uh, you know, frozen chicken breast from the store. Microwave a big piece, chop it up, and you have enough for a week for him. He's such a little guy. It's just really about the taste. And so now, because he's been with me for a long time now, it's been hundreds of times that I have approached him. And now I don't even need it. I can, without the treats, I can just go with both hands. Hey, buddy. Hey, he loves it. Good boy. I can pick him up. I can do whatever I want. But it wasn't that way at first. So for several weeks, I made sure every time I was going to approach him, I was always the guy that showed up with the treat. Hey, if I'm approaching him, I got it out and I come up to him like this. Good. He eats the treat. I pet him at the same time and sort of like hook my hand on, under his uh, his collar like that just so that he's used to it but maybe I don't do anything I just did that and I have my staff do that as well so he had several people a day approaching him like that and he just got really used to anytime anybody's coming at him with with their hands they are, they're always coming bearing gifts and it changed his whole perception of what it means for us to come and touch him and come near him but now you have you also have the recall since he knows come really well and let's see how do I do this uh, I'm just gonna throw a big old hunk over there way across the yard and you show maybe you see stand there with your back to that post and you show uh, me throw this and then I'll show you his recall hey Piffy look go way over there nope <laughs> silly I think his eyesight is not good hey look over there look look big chunks of chicken look right there okay so he sees that so show where I'm going way over here show Piffy come see what's happening good boy you can call him to come to you as well good boy so you don't only just have that you know that treat when you approach now you can call him out of a situation if you see him getting nervous with a visitor that came to your house or one of the kids or anybody else and he's acting a little bit shy or scared, instead of telling them what to do, just get him out of that situation. Go get your little piece of uh, treat that you have in a bowl on the counter, call him to come to you, call him out of that situation. If he's getting into the trash, if he's doing anything that he shouldn't be doing, he's about to run out of front door or anything, or run out of front door or anything like that, call him back to you, call him out of that situation. He's got a great recall and um, it will work. So we're gonna practice this at your house, of course, too, but. Um, that's how I never got bitten by Piffy. Bottom line is you always come bearing gifts. If somebody has to touch him or pick him up, you go and you get your treat first and you approach him like that because, you know, here he never ever bit anybody before. At your house, I know there was at least one person that he was biting because he was afraid. It's always because with Piffy, he's scared. He's a little guy in a world of giants in his mind and he was real skittish and you saw how I worked up to having him at Home Depot uh, that was you know that took a long time because there's all these people walking around all this stuff going on and you know that was a, a big challenge to be able to stabilize him enough so that he was fairly comfortable in the presence of all those big distractions but um, you know it's all about approaching him being gentle always giving him a gift and um, if you're upset with him, if you're stressed out, turn your back, go get your treat, pretend like you're not because you don't want to scare him. Back in your environment when that, where that did happen, or with you, uh, whoever in your family it did happen to, he's more triggered to do it again because he did it with that person. So you do my moves and it's way less likely and probably not likely at all that it ever happens again because your moves trigger this, this pithy, this behavior. Your old moves, you just do what you used to do. Over time, all this good stuff goes away and he bites you again. So don't do the stuff you used to do. Do it my way and he'll get better and better and he'll get easier and easier as time goes on. And eventually he forgets he ever did that because of the way you handle him. 
So it's all about what you do that triggers the good behavior, the appropriate behavior, um, and not do the things that you did before. So we never, we never uh, trigger that inappropriate response and made him bite. Good boy. We're walking Piffy up to the person we're going to introduce him to. We're stepping away. He's in a sit stay. I'm going to hand the person a little treat. Piffy loves chicken breast, so I'm going to hand him a piece of chicken breast. And then see how Piffy's waiting till I go. I'm going to pat his chest and say, "Go say hi." He goes. He gets a treat from the person. He takes that and I say, "Come." Good. I got a treat on this side. I step into him. And when you're having him sit, you can even like do a little circle like this and then have him sit at the end of that circle. Uh, whenever you turn into him and any dog, it's a very dominant uh, move where, um, first of all, he's going to come back next to you. If he's pulling, he's, he's going to draw him back next to you. Also, it just makes him feel like if you're walking into him that way and you're literally hurting him with your body, he's going to think you're in control. And it's a way of being dominant without struggling with him, pulling on him, correcting him or whatever. It's, not, it's a gentle but firm way to, to make him feel safe and feel like you've taken control. So whenever you can step into him like that, it's, it's a good idea to do. So you see the leash is always loose. He's still waiting to be released to say, go say hi. Take another treat from the, the person, takes a treat from him, come. It's a great way, good, to uh, practice your come command, which you can see, have him uh, practice his sit stay sit introduce him to new people this way and you see that I told him not to uh, instruct him before not to pet him just let Piffy approach a new person accept a yummy treat from that person call him back to come it's a great way to just get him used to a bunch of new people and pretty soon at your house he's gonna think oh when's the next time that a, a stranger is gonna show up uh, I love it when new people come by because they give me special treats and I love new people and nothing bad ever happens so that's why we're doing it this way one last time go say hi he gets a treat come one last recall, good. And that's our greeting routine. Sit. Good. So you see how he sat right away. I rewarded him by just straight down, giving that to him. Stay is built in to sit. So when you say sit, it means to stay, and you don't have to say stay. And now I've taught him how to wait to be released. So you can do little basic sit stays like this. If you're in a fence yard or you're in your house, you can drop the leash and walk away. Do different things. You can practice. If you practice this in different places, different spots in your house, on your property, out in public, it's just going to get better and better. But that's the concept. If he gets up before you release him, you say no. So I'm going to release him and I'm going to pretend like he made a mistake because he probably won't. He's got a real solid sit stay. Go. That's the way you release him to be free. So let's pretend that I had him in a sit and he made a mistake. Let's so say I walked away, dropped the leash, he made a mistake. He got up before I released him, I'd say no. I'd step into him like this. Just a little bit of pressure, he's so sensitive. Just a little bit of pressure like that. Not hanging, not popping, not jerking. A Little bit of pressure, his butt will hit the ground. And then you go back to where you were. Finish it the right way. Which would be like this, where he stays in a sit stay, waits till you come back next to him. When you reward him, right here eye contact you can see me he's looking at me as I good say good and give him that and then we would either pat his chest to be free in which case he can do whatever he want wants or if we're gonna walk with him we say okay and he walks with me down now I did it this way and you probably could see that I didn't force him down it's really just him seeing my foot do that that made him go down there. There was actually no pressure on the leash. But I think that's an issue you're gonna have for a while is that he's not going to do the down because that was kind of a sticking point with him uh, immediately as you say the command. So if you do it that way, at the moment you say it, 
All he knows still is that he heard it and he ended up going there. Don't say down, wait for him to hesitate and then put him down because you could get stuck in that pattern forever. In his mind, they say that word, I ignore them, and then they like put their foot on the leash. Do it all simultaneously and then you'll be able to not do the foot part of it and he'll just drop with just your command. But I think you're gonna have that issue at first once I'm off the scene. So I showed you how to do it that way. Stay is built into down. The stay is, is uh, very solid, as you can see. When I say down, he's gonna stay there, he's gonna wait until I come back. I'll even drop the leash and walk farther away, show where I am. You know, you can do all kinds of things. I'll walk way behind him, all the way around. See how he stays there? So you can just practice this wherever you want at your house. After that, he gets rewarded. This is the way you reward him in a downstay. He can't touch your hand. He has to really wait respectfully for you to reward him and then withdraw. No. See how he might try to touch it? No. Good. See what I had to do a couple of times? He really loves chicken breast. But if he loves it so much, he has to play the game, so to speak, and in his mind, this is a game the right way is to wait until I set it down in front of him and withdraw. It makes him focus a little extra more and it's also a matter of respect. He can't be grabbing it out of your hand and being anticipatory about the reward. He needs to focus, wait, be calm until you withdraw. It really helps. It's, you know, it's all about the details with this. The details and the way we deliver the reward, the way we release him, those are the most important things because we want every time every time we do this every day we practice a little bit he gets a little bit calmer because he's a very nervous little guy very skittish and you want him to over time get even more and more confident and calmer than even he's become here during his stay with us so he's waiting to be released the only way he gets up and he knows this is when you come back to get him so you come back stand next to him pat your leg and say okay say sit so you see how I'm having him sit before he's free. My hand smells like chicken. So I'm gonna make sure that he, no, don't touch my hand. He waits till I, no, pat his chest. See, now he's waiting, go. And that's the way that you release him to be free. It's so much better than just releasing him to be free straight out of a downstay because he'll pop up and run around and he'll lose some of that calmness that we're trying to develop by having him in the downstay. So it's all about how it ends, how that downstay ends. We want it to end on a very calm release because that way he keeps more of that calmness in him. Every time we do this, he doesn't just jump up and get all excited. You know, you see it all the time, like the downstay is good and then somebody will say, you know, okay, like that, and the dog just gets up and shakes all over and it's just crazy and happy and all the calmness is gone, right? Well, we're really after the byproduct of doing this in a very specific way, which is like releasing him calmly so that he changes 24 seven, so that when you release him, he's a little bit calmer every time. So make sure the release is calm, just like you saw me do and not hyper and, you know, playful like sometimes it is. So there's your downstay. Okay. I want to show you how I've been practicing the come command. You already saw me do it when I was doing the greeting routine, uh, but I just want to go over the basic rules of how I practice every day. If you do it the same way every day, then pretty soon it just becomes like second nature to do it the same way. You don't even have to think about it. So I always keep the leash on my left hand. I have the reward on my right. I always call him to a closed hand like this, a fist, a target hand, because of course we want all these things to work when there's no leash and no reward. So in an emergency, that where he's going towards somebody that uh, you know doesn't like dogs or he's about to run out the front door or he's already out on the street for some reason and he's about to go into the street god forbid you just no no treat no leash just pretend like you have it he doesn't know this is empty and this will work so you practice with a reward when you're practicing your come command and you always practice with a leash whenever you're practicing so that um, when you don't have either of those things it still works in real life so left hand leash, right hand reward. Also, 
always practice um, calling him to you when he's looking away from you or when he's moving away from you or you know distracted by something because that's a real life situation where he's into something else and you want to call him away from that that thing whatever that is whether it's trash on the ground another dog a person whatever it is so what you'll see if you do this a lot you practice this a lot once he's back with you he's just always going to be looking at you and he'd even be doing this without the chicken that I have but you can't call him away from staring at you lovingly and how and that's not good practice so I always use a distraction so I have the bigger piece of chicken in my palm and I have this little piece I'm gonna throw as a distraction go he's gonna go get that come I'm gonna call him away from it good see how I backed away as well when you back away it um, influences him to run back to you like he, he is drawn to you like a magnet it's so much better than standing still and if you practice this way where because you back away he races to you you'll see that when you can't back away if your backs to a wall or something he's gonna race to you because of the way you practiced so it's all about how you practice that makes it mediocre or great and he didn't even find it he went looking for it but he didn't find it so we're gonna use the same piece of chicken I'm gonna do it again to show you again go goes after it come I call him away see I back away good he comes to my right hand he didn't get it all um, his nose touches my hand it opens the other hand grabs the leash you see why I have the leash on the left hand it's right there it's it's perfect come he comes to you you grab it just like that he gets the reward and you have him so you want to <clears throat> when you're calling him to come to you if you have him on a leash definitely grab the leash because you don't want it to have him getting used to coming grabbing the treat and then running off so if for some reason you're calling him if it's an emergency uh, and you're calling him and he doesn't have a leash it's let's do this the right way distract him go and then come good I hooked my hand under his collar so always make sure when he comes to you that you either grab the leash or you hook your hand under the collar so he's really used to you doing that that's just part of the way it goes every time and then whenever he comes to you he'll just know okay he's staying with you he came to you he got paid and you have him restrained with with this little guy you can call him to you and then you can just hoist him up because he's so little get him out of trouble um, you never want to be calling him to you and then he takes a treat and then he runs away because he's a smart little guy and he'll start to do that a lot of dogs do that so always make sure you grab the leash of the collar and that's it those are all the rules of practicing a really solid recall if you want to get have him be even better instead of using a six foot leash get a longer leash 10 foot 15 foot long line practice in your backyard from long distances the concepts the same if he ever ignores your command you tap the leash and he'll come your way never repeat the command with any of these these uh, commands sit down or come you never repeat it you're always practicing on a leash so the leash is a way to gently but firmly reinforce the command the first time you said it so all he knows heard it once and he ended up doing it okay sit okay so I have two gates here sit I had him sit at the first I stepped out I stepped back he walked through with me having him sit at the second gate here and it's the same concept with your front door no see how I popped up this is actually harder than my front door because this gate leads to the outside world and right behind us there's stuff going on I want you to show right behind you people are unloading stuff out of the truck sit so anyway he's distracted by all the goings on out here but that's why it's so great to practice in real life I reset him I stepped into him reset him step back again this time he waits no see how he popped up he didn't move but he popped up so I pulled up with a little bit of pressure he went back this time he will stay there also we never have a camera person standing right in front of us with the camera pointing at us so it's a little bit extra distracted okay he walks through with me I'm just gonna go and go back and do it again sit so let's say that this is your front door you're coming in or out you have him sit you open the door you step in you step back 
you say, okay, come on, buddy. And he's like, why? I want to leave now. Sit, I'm going to have him do it on the way out again. It's a great exercise to do if you just have a minute or a couple minutes to practice. Just find a doorway with a gate or, you know, your door to your house. Step, you know, have him sit, step away, out. You're accentuating the fact that this is your boundary, not his. He doesn't follow you because he has a sit stay. Come back to get him. Okay, he walks through with you and only with you without pulling. See that, how the leash is loose? He's learned his little lesson really well. As you know how he used to race all over the place and not listen and pull on the leash and all that. Okay, sit. And now we're gonna cross the street and I treat a curb as a boundary as well. So we come to a curb, I do a little basic sit stay. He has to really focus and think to do this. He's doing really well. And then he waits till I come back next to him. Okay, we walk across the street. All you have to do if he does pull ahead is just do a little tap. See how I'm holding the leash, the, the part that goes to him comes out the back of my hand. It just lays perfectly right there. He goes ahead of you, you can tap. You're always only tapping, you're never restraining, you're never going like this. It's just a little bit of looseness on the leash, tapping, he's just so easy to, to handle as you can see. And then over here, once you cross the street, sit and pat his chest, go, go. And then you have uh, free time on your walk and that's the way I do it. Every time we come to a curb, that boundary's mine, not his, just doorways, gates, curbs, everything like that. So he gets really used to not crossing them, going across them, that makes it far less likely for him to just race out in the street or through a doorway if you do this whenever you walk him. Um, and it's a great little focus exercise. 30 seconds, a sit stay, walk around in both ways. He walks across the street, you see how slow, you saw how slow I was walking across the street with him, making sure he wasn't pulling me. He's very easy to handle. Um, and then over here, sit and then release, and we get to have our free time. Free time is most of the time on the walk, and he can pee and sniff and do whatever he wants to do. And uh, the walk can be fun, but also you do, you do training, you in, intersperse uh, training in the middle of the walk, like little, little bits of training at every curb and, and uh, little recalls, calling him like right there. I don't know what he's looking at, but come and call him away from that. Good, whenever you have a chance to call him away from something on the ground or another dog or a person, just use your, your recall to practice. And uh, it's the best way to practice, practicing calling away from real distractions in public. Okay. Down. We're just gonna practice out here. Where there's kind of a, a lot of stuff going on. If you can see over there, that's the back door of the store where people are coming out uh, with all kinds of big items and with carts and all kinds of stuff. Walking past, see I'm doing a down stay with him. Somebody's approaching us, good. Didn't pop up, which is good. He was walking towards us pretty quickly. So Piffy can handle a lot more stress than before. And just getting him here, that's the Amtrak train right there, which is pretty noisy. Good. And I just wanted you to see that he could actually do some of this stuff out in public with uh, big distractions. Here we have a cart coming from behind us. A couple big carts. Good boy. More carts coming. And if you have an opportunity to do this and practice out in a public place where there's a lot going on, it's really helps him be calmer in other situations, maybe at home when there's a lot of chaos going on with the kids or something like that. Just, you know, just having to really focus and ignore distractions and stay in a downstay and just focus on me or you, it really helps develop a higher level of uh, focus, which actually uh, makes him more immune to stress, which is the whole reason we're doing this. So he's waiting for me to come back next to him. I'm gonna say, okay, gonna get up, I'm gonna say sit, and then I'm gonna release him, go. 
Very good boy. Sit. Oh, practice a little sit stay with all this stuff going on here. And pan around just to show all these things happening. Back over even to this way. There are people coming. So he's doing really well. He's saying his little sit stay. Good, give him a reward. Remember, always reward him just like that. And he just kind of automatically automatically stares at me right now. And you want him looking at you. You want eye contact. Just like this. Good. He's such a little guy, you kind of have to get down there a little bit, but it's well worth it. So don't do this where the giant hand comes out of the sky. No. Make sure that it's straight down. He's looking in your eyes as you reward him. Seems like a little thing, a little detail, but it's very important. So we have people walking right past us. He's still in the sit stay. That was scary, so for some reason he decided just to take an abrupt turn right there, but he still stayed in the sit stay. That was really good for him. So I'm going to release him now. Go. That was very good. Good job, buddy. Come on, let's go.